So in the last part, we learned how to set up our login form to call our API and log the user in. And we had lots of nice features, such as if we put in an invalid password and we click login, it tells us and we can respond to that. And if we just click on the button itself, that gives us a bit of feedback that tells us there was something wrong. So in this part, what we're gonna do is we're gonna give the registration form the same treatment. So if I go to our registration form, you can see we have three fields here. So what I'll do is I'll go back to Bootstrap Studio and we're gonna create the registration form. And the creators of Bootstrap Studio have been kind enough to give me two free licenses to give away all you have to do to be in with the chance of winning is subscribe to the how code youtube channel follow how code on facebook twitter and reddit and i'll put everyone's name who's a follower into a raffle and their winner's name will just be picked at random if you subscribe to the youtube channel follow us on facebook twitter and reddit you've got four chances to win so let's get started with the registration form so if we go to bootstrap studio here we have our login form what i'm going to do is create a new page this new page we're going to rename it to create account and then we're going to drag in this login form again because that's going to be our template and we're going to look at our registration form you can see we look for a username a password and an email address so we have a username a password and an email address so what we'll do is we will scroll up on the html section you can see it here there's our form group and what we want to do is right click over here and we will duplicate that and now if we just scroll this down you can see we have three form fields we want our first one to be our username so it's going to be called username and it's going to have a placeholder of username next we want to change our login button from our login button to firstly a button not a submit button and then we want to change the text on it and we can do that just by double clicking and change it to create account and of course we can add any sort of customizations we want we can just Scroll down here, we can change the color of it, we can do absolutely anything we want to it, but we're going to keep the default because the default actually looks really good. And what we're going to do is we're just going to delete that link, or we could just actually say, already got an account. Click here, something like that. So now what I'll do, since we have the preview on, is I'll just click on that and open it in the browser. So now we're previewing the create account page. We click on that, it's not going to refresh the page because we changed it from a submit button to just a regular button. And before we can create the user's account using the API, we need to modify the API to include creating accounts. So to do that, what we're going to do is go to our API. And when we go to auth, when we send a post request to auth, we log the user in. So what we'll do when we send a post request to users is we will create the user's account. So we'll go to users. And the first thing we need to do is get the username and the password and the email. Just like this, we get username, password and email. So we'll just call the second one email and it will get the email failed. We could do some checks to check that all of these were supplied, but we're just going to assume they were for simplicity because this isn't a series about creating an API specifically. So we're just going to assume these have all been filled in. And then what we're going to do is we're going to begin the process of creating the user's account. So to do that, we want to go to the create account page. It's pretty much exactly the same. We've got our variables here, we've got our data. And what we want to do is just copy from this if statement all the way down to here. Then we'll go to our API and we will paste them in here. So we'll change it from db query where query is a static variable to db query just like this. And we scroll down you can see that's how we query it here because we changed db to an object in that series and we'll probably do it in this series because that is a better way to do things. So we have our db query here. If that's the same. Our checks for username length, password and email length, length are the same. We only need to change our queries. Change this to db query. And as for sending mail at the minute, this won't work. So to fix it, what we need to do is go to classes, go to our mail class, copy that, paste it in our API class, copy PHP mailer and paste it in API as well. And then now what we need to do is just scroll up to the top of our API require once mail.php and that should work. But before we test that, what we're going to do is scroll down. And here when we echo success, what we want to do is return JSON. So if we scroll down here, you can see that when, whenever our query is successful, we're echoing out some JSON. And when it's not successful, we're echoing out some JSON and returning a response code. So what we're going to do is just copy this and go back up to here. And when the user already exists, what we're going to do is we're just going to paste this in here. Say error, user exists. And the response code is going to be a 409 response code, which means that there was a conflict. So we're just going to delete that. We're going to copy this. And we're just going to keep pasting it up here. So we're going to change invalid username to invalid username. And we're going to return a 409 response code. We could change the response codes to be more specific. So if the username is invalid, we could return a different response code. But we're just going to keep it simple. We're just going to return 409s for them all. Invalid username, exactly the same thing. Invalid username. And I'm just going to keep doing this.
And then for success, we're just going to paste this in here. We're going to return a 200 response code and we're going to say success. And we could return something like the user ID or we could just say user created. Now that we've done that, we want to go to Bootstrap Studio and we have our registration form. What we're going to do is just click on the button, go to animate and we're just going to add the animation that we did last time, the shake one. There are lots of other animations we could use. We could use rubber band. You can use literally any one you want. But we're going to use shake. So what we're going to do is we're going to export this again. We're going to click export. It says the design was exported. And you can see now we have assets and we have our create account page. So we're going to copy that. And we're going to paste it in our social network source code. And we're going to open that up in Atom. We're going to change this from login form to just say something like create account. And what we want to do is give all of our forms IDs. So it's going to be username. We change the type to text, just like in the last video. The ID for email is just going to be email and the ID for password is just going to be password. The button will have an ID of CF for create account. And what we'll do is we'll delete the animation. The reason we added it was because it inserted this line of code here for us. And that will allow us to go back to the login page and we can just copy and paste this code in here to animate the button. So what we'll do is we will just copy this JavaScript code and paste it in here. And this JavaScript code, instead of going to auth, we want to go to users. And we're still sending JSON. And then this time we're sending the username, the password, and the email. So we're just going to copy username. And then we're going to paste it in between username and password. And that's going to be where we put the email. So we just pasted it in there. Change this to email. Change this to email. And then here what we want to do is we want to put in a comma. So that should be it. When we get a success response, we'll, we'll log that to the console. And we get an error. We're going to shake the create account button. So now we're just going to run that. You can see here we're not in the correct place. We're using the preview version that was created in Bootstrap Studio. What we want to do is go to social network slash create account.html. Here we are on the create account page. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click create account and nothing happened because we didn't change the click action from login to CF or create account. We were targeting the wrong button. Refresh, go to network, we'll click create account. And you can see the button shook. Wait two seconds, click it again, the button shook again. And now we're getting 409 responses, which means we had a conflict because that's what we returned every time something went wrong. And you can see it says invalid username. You can see it says it as well down here. So I'm going to put in another username, Francis McNamee, 123456, a random email that doesn't exist, and a random password. And then I'm going to click create account. It says success, user created. If I try to create it again, now the button shakes. It says user already exists. So just like in the last video, this will all, all the source code, including the design, will be uploaded onto the GitHub. And that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. If you have any questions, you can email me at francis at howcode.org. Also, don't forget to subscribe on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit, so you can enter the giveaway to get a free copy of Bootstrap Studio. Bootstrap Studio normally costs $50, and it's on sale at the minute, so you're saving a lot of money just by uh, subscribing. So that's it for this video, and I'll see you next time.